thinking about poverty and hardship and how difficult it is for many people now. And for some reason, the Dust Bowl was just at the top of my mind and I've been thinking about it all day. So I thought, why not do a video on the Dust Bowl? I actually had forgotten a lot about this. I learned about it in school, of course, but there's something about this significant, traumatic event that happened more than once. There was more than one dust storm for years, and I think we should take a look at it and see what we can learn from history. With insufficient understanding of the ecology of the plains, Farmers had conducted extensive deep plowing of the virgin topsoil of the Great Plains during the previous decade. This had displaced the native deep-rooted grasses that normally trapped soil and moisture, even during times of drought and high winds. The rapid mechanization of farm equipment, especially small gasoline tractors, and widespread use of the combine harvester contributed to farmers' decisions to convert arid grassland that received no more than 10 inches of rain per year to cultivated cropland. And why would they do this? Because the government encouraged settlement and development of the plains for agriculture via the Homestead Act of 1862, where it offered settlers quarter sections. These were 160 acre plots. With the end of the Civil War in 1865 and the completion of the first transcontinental railroad in 1869, waves of new migrants and immigrants reached the Great Plains and they greatly increased the acreage under cultivation. An unusually wet period in the Great Plains mistakenly led settlers and the federal government to believe that rain follows the plow, a popular phrase among real estate promoters, that the climate of the region had changed permanently. While initial agriculture endeavors were primarily cattle ranching, the adverse effect of harsh winters on the cattle beginning in 1886, a short drought in 1890, and general overgrazing led many landowners to increase the amount of land under cultivation. The agricultural methods favored by farmers during this period created conditions for large-scale erosion under certain environmental conditions. The widespread conversion of the land by deep plowing and other soil preparation methods to enable agriculture eliminated the native grasses which held the soil in place and help retain moisture during the dry periods. Furthermore, cotton farmers left fields bare during winter months, when winds in the high plains are the highest, and burned the stubble as a means to control weeds prior to planting, thereby depriving the soil of organic nutrients and surface vegetation. During the drought of the 1930s, the unanchored soil turned to dust, which the prevailing winds blew away in huge clouds that sometimes blacken the sky. These choking billows of dust, named black blizzards or black rollers, traveled cross-country, reaching as far as the East Coast and striking such cities as New York City and Washington, D.C. On the plains, they often reduced visibility to three feet or less. The drought and erosion of the Dust Bowl affected 100 million acres that centered on the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma and touched adjacent sections of New Mexico, Colorado, and Kansas. The Dust Bowl forced tens of thousands of poverty-stricken families who were unable to pay mortgages or grow crops to abandon their farms and losses reached 25 million per day by 1936. That's equivalent to 470 million in 2020. Many of these families, who were often known as Okies because so many of them came from Oklahoma, migrated to California and other states to find that the Great Depression had rendered economic conditions there little better than those they had left. This catastrophe intensified the economic impact of the Great Depression in the region. In 1935, many families were forced to leave their farms and travel to other areas seeking work because of the drought, which at the time had already lasted four years. 
The abandonment of homesteads and financial ruin resulting from catastrophic topsoil loss led to widespread hunger and poverty. Dust bowl conditions fomented on exodus of the displaced from Texas, Oklahoma, and the surrounding Great Plains to adjacent regions. More than 500,000 Americans were left homeless. More than 350 houses had to be torn down after one storm alone. The severe drought and dust storms had left many homeless, others had their mortgages foreclosed by banks, or felt they had no choice but to abandon their farms in search of work. Many Americans migrated west looking for work. Parents packed up jalopies with their families and a few personal belongings and headed west in search of work. In November of 1933, a very strong dust storm stripped topsoil from desiccated South Dakota farmlands in one of a series of severe dust storms that year. Beginning in May 1934, a strong two-day dust storm removed massive amounts of Great Plains topsoil in one of the worst such storms in the Dust Bowl. The dust clouds blew all the way to Chicago, where they deposited 12 million pounds of dust. Two days later, the same storm reached cities to the east, such as Cleveland, Buffalo, Boston, New York City, and Washington, D.C. That winter, red snow fell on New England. On April 14, 1935, known as Black Sunday, 20 of the worst black blizzards occurred across the entire sweep of the Great Plains, from Canada south to Texas. The dust storms caused extensive damage and appeared to turn the day to night. Witnesses report they could not see five feet in front of them at certain points. Much of the farmland was eroded in the aftermath of the Dust Bowl. In 1941, a Kansas Agricultural Experiment Station released a bulletin that suggested re-establishing native grasses by the hay method. Developed in 1937 to speed up the process and increase returns from pasture, the hay method was supposed to occur naturally in Kansas over 25 to 40 years. The casual mechanism for the droughts can be linked to ocean temperature anomalies. Specifically, Atlantic sea surface temperatures appear to have had an indirect effect on the general atmospheric circulation, while Pacific sea surface temperatures seem to have had the most direct influence. Even back then, science was ignoring clear acts of God. I see God all over this one. How can you deny it? Over and over again, yes. Man started it by making the wrong choice, but God's in charge of everything. I don't understand why. I will never understand suffering in the world. But clearly, this was a setup over and over again, one storm after the other. Caused by what? Human error. It's written in Hosea, my people die from a lack of knowledge. The machines showed up and it seemed like the answer. Technology always seems like the answer. But many times after we've gone through all of it, we are left with desolation. I feel like this is gonna happen again when it comes to technology that we're using now. Back during the last century, it was the Industrial Revolution. And we are paying the price for that now with all the chemicals in our environment and the problems that these chemicals cause. During the Dust Bowl, what was going on with Jews? Some were desperate to get out of Germany and come to America. Many were being turned away. Children were turned away at Ellis Island. They were not being accepted. There was a time in America when Jews were not let in. The Jews that were here, they were desperate to get in touch with their relatives and they would go and visit the offices to see if possibly one of their relatives had arrived from Europe. It was a very nervous time for many Jews. There were also Jewish gangsters the best known Jewish gangsters, Mayor Lansky, Bugsy Siegel, Longy Zwillman, Mo Dalitz, they were involved in a number of rackets, illegal drug dealing, prostitution gambling, and loan sharking. These were not nice men, 
But during the rise of American Nazism in the 1930s, and when Israel was being founded between 1945 and 1948, they proved to be staunch defenders of the Jewish people. Few of them were religiously observant, they rarely attended services, but they did support congregations financially. They did not keep kosher or send their children to day schools. But at crucial moments, they protected other Jews in America and around the world. During the Dust Bowl, persecution was happening to Jews in Europe and the world was beginning to fall apart everywhere. We can look throughout history and see the consistent suffering of mankind due to poor choices. My own personal suffering has been caused by poor choices. <sighs> the amount of tragedies and uh, sad cases that I see every day is heartbreaking, heartbreaking. How many people are suffering? How many people are dying? How many people are losing everything they have? It's, it's unbearable. What does Hashem want? What's, what's gonna be? It looks to me that this year started worse than the past year. We all pray and hope that Hashem will turn things around. The way it looks right now, that things getting worse. Between 1930 and 1940, approximately 3.5 million people moved out of the Plain States. In just over a year, over 86,000 people migrated to California. This number is more than the number of migrants to that area then during the 1849 gold rush. Migrants abandoned farms in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, Colorado, and New Mexico, but were often generally referred to as Okies, Arkies, or Texies. Terms such as Okies and Arkies came to be known in the 1930s as the standard terms for those who had lost everything and were struggling the most during the Great Depression. When I look at history like this, I can only look at my life and be grateful that I have never had to endure hardships like this. No matter how hard my life has been, no matter what I've gone through, I've never had to go through a dust bowl. I never had to live through the Great Depression. But we never know what's gonna happen. So we have to be strong and we have to be full of gratitude for what we have right now because we really don't know what could happen. We don't know what the long-term ramifications are for what we are choosing to do right now. We can live with real gratitude and pray for the best. If you found truth and value in this video today, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you will be notified the next time I upload another video. This is Rocco Tipora. I am the founder of Two Soap. Two Soap has been the truth for teeth and gums since 2003. Thank you for joining me today. Always remember, if we don't learn from history, we're destined to repeat it.